What's going on, guys? This is Dan. I'm at the Bat Cave where I usually am working on the car. So we got the radiator today. And no, this is not the radiator that we got today, obviously. This is the old one that came out of the car. Um, I want to show you how thick this radiator here is. And I'll put a link in the description below on where I got my new radiator from. So far, I think it's nice and I like it. Um, however, you do have to modify your upper mount a little bit. And, you know, I'll work on that later. Um, outside, it's raining pretty good. Tropical storm Ophelia is making its way to the Carolinas. So a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain. But I just wanted to get this on here, or at least inside of the car, so I could show you what it looks like. So this is the core measurement we have on the old radiator. It's like an inch and a quarter or so. Mounting tab is about two and a quarter. Let me show you the new one. This guy. This is our new radiator here. I got one of the transmission favoritings in. Um, yeah, this is a unit and a half here. So this guy has a two and a half wide by two inch core. You're getting three quarters of a core more. This is a three row. Got this one off of eBay, all aluminum. None of this plastic side tank crap. So what I'm gonna do is right now we're gonna reuse the same condenser and the trans cooler for now. I'm not super worried about AC. We're heading into October. AC is not really gonna be that much of an issue. And maybe with the um, new radiator, probably may not even be an issue at all. So we're just gonna put everything on this radiator, set it down inside of the car, lay it, lay it around. We'll rustle with the fans and stuff just because I have to get the power steering pulley back on the heads. Right now I need to get the radiator inside the car and pressurize it because I wanna make sure everything is good and sealed before I start putting on headers because I ported these heads and may have went a little crazy with the coolant passages. I'm not sure. I'm 99% sure that I did not go crazy with the coolant pipe passages, but just want to make sure it's, it's nice to have the headers off of it and pressurize everything and see what's what. So I'm going to get to work here and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys, so I'm back and I got the transmission fittings in. Um, did kind of have a little bit of a gripe with the transmission fittings. The threads seem... A little rough. I kind of had to persuade the fittings to kind of go into their holes. Um, I ended up putting Teflon tape on this one here for good measure. This one here, I didn't really put any Teflon tape on it because it's a pie and I can get to it if I have to. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in the car. And uh, oh, I also got the condenser mounted up and. All the, um, there's just water from me hosing the condenser off. All the mounting tabs so far look like they're, in, you know, looks like they're correct. So they do claim that this is a bolt-on affair. However, the top being a little bit thicker, my upper radiator mount really doesn't like to sit down on it a whole lot. I'm going to have to adjust that at a later date. Yeah, not really... A, a huge deal i mean it'll be fine so right now i'm not going to put the fan in yet because like i said i'm just trying to get in the car and as i said earlier i want to get coolant inside of the engine and i want to pressurize everything and look for leaks so i'm gonna get this in the car and i'll come back with how i feel it fits okay guys so we got the radiator inside of the car um Put a gallon of antifreeze inside of it. And so far, no no leaks. I'm kind of curious to see how much coolant this thing is going to hold. I know I talked about leaving my transmission line or bending my transmission line, but I just for giggles, I have all this extra hose here. 
and it's really thick braided hose, so I'm not really too worried about it kinking. And I left it like this, and to tell you the truth, I kind of like it. It seems like it, it it's easier to get to. You can just unhook the battery and get to the line right there. So I really do like having this. Now, uh, I may switch my transmission cooler when I switch my condenser out. So that way it'll, um, that way it'll, uh, um, whatchamacallit, it'll be a better location. And I'll probably end up using 6AN hardline. Um, I, you know, my transmission lines are long enough to where, you know, if there's any kind of flex, it's on, the motor's on polyurethane mounts, the transmission's on polyurethane mounts. I don't think it's going to flex a lot to where it's going to hurt a metal line, but that's just me. So, anyways, we got the radiator in, and we're going to do some final connections here, and we're going to pump some fluid inside of her. Stay tuned. What's going on, guys? This is Dan. We're here with the car, and we got the radiator in. We got it all bolted down. All the lines are connected, and we got coolant inside of there so this radiator claims it is a hundred percent bolt-in no modifications i'm going to tell you right now that is not the, the case it gets you close but it's not a hundred percent bolt-in there's just no way um would i do it again and get this radiator yeah prob probably probably I like it. The fitment isn't bad. There's other ones that are way worse. So just keep that in mind. I'm not really, you know, I'm not really um going to knock knock them for that for that one. Now as far as uh some kind of bug that just flew into my antifreeze here. He's floated upstream. A little mop. So he'll float back to the top and I'll get him then. Now, look at how thick this thing is. You're going to have to do some modifications. Would I would recommend you get a thin piece of rubber for the bottom of your radiator tray. I have the little foam that came with the radiator when I bought it in in there now and it's um it'll do the job but if you have the little rubber stops for forget it man it's just there's no way that that's gonna hold because it's the radiator is so fat that it comes out of the stops and um yeah the other thing is they made the bleed nipple here too small i can take this and just push this on and push this off and it's really loose so they got the nipple size wrong for the overflow but i mean there's hose clamps and in all honesty this hose could be swollen not a big deal everything else fits the sensor fits the transmission lines they fit everything fits so I give it about an 8 out of 10. Would I recommend this to someone else? If you're on a budget, yes. If you're not on a budget, save your money for the Griffin. As far as fitment of the airbox, it doesn't really fit that good. Now keep in mind, I have a 97 condenser in my car. So my, you can see right there, the plastic hits the condenser right there. I have to notch that. So not a big deal. So I'm not really gonna knock it for that. But it'll bring this down a little bit more and it'll be all good. I mean, right now the thing is, it's solid. It's in there. It's not going no, 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 nowhere. So anyways, guys, that's my review on this radiator. We're gonna wrap it up here because it's starting to rain pretty good. Um, like, share, subscribe, do all that things. I'll keep working. 
take care of one another, be safe, and see you on the next one.